Today's video will be beginner friendly and will teach my viewers how to do capacity tests on individual lithium cells, on DIY builds with your own BMS, or even a brand new drop in lead acid replacement with this cheap tool on AliExpress. And I thought these were cheesy and I was avoiding them like the plague, but this is all I use now. They are super accurate and I love them. And this video will pertain mainly to lithium iron phosphate cells, but you can use the lessons learned in this video to test other cells like lithium titanate or nickel manganese cobalt oxide. But yes, this is beginner friendly and you will learn how to test these with this little tool so that you do not get ripped off. And as you guys know, in most of my videos, we find most of our problems when we do a battery capacity test. Recently, we had 120 amp hour rated cells from China. They were grade B lithium iron phosphate, and we only got 116 amp hours. So a quick capacity test instantly told us that our cells were a ripoff. And in the video, we're gonna use this cheap capacity tester. There are more expensive ones that cost over $1,000, and you can use those, and they'll probably be a little bit more accurate. But when you're testing solar batteries that are hundreds of amp hours in capacity, accuracy is not that big of a deal. I'll take 1% plus or minus accuracy, and I'll be super happy with that. This one's about $30 on AliExpress or $45 on Amazon, and it works really well. And all this is is a fancy heater. All it does is takes the power of your battery from the positive and the negative terminal and it converts it into heat and it measures it. So all you have to do is connect a battery, mess with these little dials, and then voila, you have a capacity reading down here when the battery is depleted. And you can actually change the low voltage disconnect voltage. So if you're trying to test an individual cell, you can change that setting and it will stop the test when the battery gets too low, which is very important for lithium batteries. So anyways, I just connected two wires here to an XT60, and we're gonna connect some batteries. And here are some battery clamps that connect to an XT60 connector. After you have the wires connected, just plug in the power supply at the top. And when you first turn it on, it's in Chinese. So press this button one time, and then you will see the voltage, the current, the capacity in amp hours, the energy in watt hours, and the time that has gone on for the test. And then press it again, and I like this one. It has the voltage, the amperage, and the watts, which wasn't in the last screen, the amp hours, the watt hours, and the time for the test. If you wanna reset this test, you hold this button down, and it will reset it, so now it's at zero. Now let's click it one more time, and and it has other random displays. And if you click it one more time, you can change the backlight settings and also the high voltage disconnect and also the low voltage disconnect. And you can change how many amps maximum. This unit can only handle 185 watts. So for a nominal battery voltage of 12 volts, you can only pull around 15 amps max. So you probably do not need to change this setting at all and then click one more time. 185 watts is the maximum. If you want to decrease that, you can, but it cannot go higher than this number. And then click one more time and we're back to the original menu. Now that you understand the basic menu functions, all you need to know is that before you connect a battery, you need to turn these dials anti-clockwise all the way to their range extent. And these knobs are important because when you connect a battery, they will control the current. So we want them set at zero. After we connect the battery, we will increase the current and it will increase the wattage. Depending on the voltage of the battery will determine how much you need to spin these dials. But before you connect a battery, it needs to be on zero. So do that first. And so the first battery we're gonna connect is a Line Energy 1300 watt hour. And you just put it on the main terminals like that. And you will see 13.2 volts in zero amps. Now I'm going to increase the course adjustment for the current and you will watch the current increase. And right now we're consuming 40 watts. So right now this is creating heat at this heat sink and this fan is blowing it away. And we can increase this power until this is at 185 watts. So let's just keep rotating it up and up so that means that I increased the current too much, so I need to decrease it. So let's try that one more time. Now we're at 170 watts, and I'm gonna use the fine adjustment knob to reach the 180. <laughs> God damn it, that was so close. All right, we're just gonna run it 180. And then you just let this sit and do its job. It will create heat and get very hot, 
but when you come back in about five hours, we will have the total capacity as a watt hour and amp hour readout on the screen. And for most solar batteries, your capacity will be large because this is you know stationary energy storage. So for these, if you want a 0.2C rate, you need to crank this all the way up. This is only using 14 amps. So to actually do a full capacity test will take quite a long time. It's like six or seven hours. But what's nice about this compared to the other methods that I used to use for capacity testing is that you can set it and leave it. I go to bed and then I come back in the morning and I have battery capacity test results and it's nice and easy that way. So you don't have to worry about anything. As long as this is plugged into a wall and you have a solid connection right here and you have a fuse or some form of OCPD on this battery, you are fine. You can leave it and it will disconnect it the BMS and then the test will stop and you'll have your results. Now that you know how to connect it to this battery, let's connect it to this one. Because we're restarting the test, you want to hold this button down until all the numbers are at zero. Now we have 13.3 volts, so we're going to increase the amperage and that's 182 watts, so now it's set. I would just leave it for some hours and come back and we have a capacity test result. But I would never test with raw cells. I would always have a BMS if I were to do a capacity test with lithium iron phosphate, just so you know. Now we're gonna test an individual cell. So here's the positive and here's the negative. And check it out, we have 3.6 volts, so this battery is fully charged. Now we're gonna increase the current. And because this is a lower nominal voltage, the watt consumption will be decreased. So we can crank this knob all the way and not worry about hitting 186 watts. Because even when it's rotated at maximum at what 18 amps, we're only pulling 57 or 56 watts. So let's increase both knobs and see what the max current that we can get is 22.5. This is a 0.22C test. But most data sheets for capacity for lithium iron phosphate are at a 0.2C. So what we want to do is decrease this actually to 20 amps. Now we will have an accurate assessment of this individual cell's capacity. And because this is an individual cell, we need to set a low voltage disconnect so that we do not damage this battery because we cannot find a BMS for a single battery cell. So what you want to do is switch through the menu until you get to the low voltage disconnect, which is usually at zero. And then you want to hold it down and it will look like this. So when this battery drops to 2.6 volts, it will end the test. This is very important for lithium iron phosphate. You do not want to go below that voltage. And if you want extremely accurate results, you want these batteries to be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and you want to get as close to 0.2C as possible. So what that means is that if you have a 100 amp battery and you pull 20 amps from this continuously, capacity results that you have will be very accurate. If you were to do instead a 1C rate or 100 amps continuous, you would have a decreased capacity of around like 95, maybe 93 amp hours for a 100 amp hour pack. It depends on how new it is and how well matched the cells are and all the components connecting it in the bus bars, but typically it's gonna be around that amount. But there's nothing wrong with doing a slower rate than 0.2C. It will take longer, but you will have very accurate results. And that's pretty much how you use these. You can use these for all sorts of batteries. If your system already has a capacity monitor shunt, then you probably do not need to buy these. As long as your system is pulling full capacity all the time, then you'll be fine and you don't need to test it. But every six months or so, if you have a lot of individual battery cells or batteries, it's smart to get one of these and test each individual one just to make sure that you're pulling your full capacity. Or if you bought a new battery or you're building your own battery, you absolutely need this. This is such a useful tool for that. If you want to see my more advanced video, I just posted another one a couple minutes ago on how to use a Hall effect sensor or a shunt for large or high C rate tests. So if you have lithium titanate and you want to push the thermal limits of your batteries, that's how you're going to do it. And I actually had an AliExpress product not work as advertised, so that's always fun, so check out that video. Anyways, these are very cheap and easy. It's only like 30 to $40, which is a lot cheaper than the over $1,000 ones that you can buy online. So yeah, just stick with one of these. You could buy multiple, maybe buy three of them, and if one of them's inaccurate, then throw it away. These are still 100 times cheaper than other options on the market. And they're super accurate. I've tested it with all of my other meters, my Hall effect sensor, my Klein tools, and this gives me accurate results. So, so far, 
far, I like it. If you disagree with me, please let me know. I hope you guys like this as a beginner tutorial. And yeah, check out your batteries. You do not want to get ripped off. There are lots of shady salesmen on AliExpress and most of our batteries are coming from China. So be sure to test them. All of my viewers should do that. And thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you soon. Bye.